All right, guys, this is the Team Liquid versus Golden Guardians Week 5, Day 2 game. And I need to understand, I need to know how it happens. This is like, so this is one of the few games that I've ac I actually do know the result of. This is like hearing that, you know, this is like Hercule beat Cell, you know? And you really have to wonder just how it happened. Now, unlike Reddit... I uh, will not be misled or fooled by the uh, the masks and bobblehead-looking cartoony things on the TV as the world watches Hercule take down Cell. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna actually see what the hell ended up happening. Who's the Golden Guardians coach? All right, so Zoe, Gangplank, and Camille banned by TL. Skarner first picked by Golden Guardians. All right, so Skarner was first picked, responded to with Tristana and Sejuani. Tristana is pretty okay, able to actually just knock away the Skarner as he's trying to go for an engage. So I think that's going to be a pretty okay pick. Then Nar ends up being picked up immediately by Golden Guardians. And Camille and Gangplank are both banned. Jax is still going to be on the table. Scion! Uh... Uh... He's like, wait, you, you locked in what? <laughs> really? Hmm, well, shit. <laughs> like, yikes, like, what? <laughs> what's going on? Scion's actually not as bad as some people are thinking, but it, it's, it's weird to see TL pick Scion against Golden Guardians. That's not a pick that I think makes all that much sense. Scion's really good. Uh, MVP Ed was um, the player that, you know, initially popularized him a very long time ago. At least in pro play. You know, when no one else was picking them. So, anyway, second ban phase. Victor? Something's really going on here. Okay, and Tom Kench being banned away. Tom Kench is interesting. I guess that they just want a way to eviscerate the Varus. And then they take away the Tark. So, because when you're looking at this, right? When you have this and you have this, Tark is just so good for Golden Guardians. When you have Sejuani and Sion. So they take that away from them. And then Golden Guardians respond with the Braum, which isn't necessarily that bad of a pick. Oriana ends up being picked up. And I think that she's just getting way too much credit, to be honest, as a champion. I think Talia is just a much better pick. And then Team Liquid actually respond with Corky. Corky not that bad either. So when you're looking at this, you have like Valkyrie, or you have the Valkyrie, you have the W, etc. Very, very difficult for Skarner to get onto either one of these targets. Um, you have the Tristana and the Corky, which can obviously kite against all of the remaining members of Golden Guardians. They're going to be quite good. Um, I mean, th there's a lot of versatility inside of Team Liquid's team composition. Um, when you're looking at like the jungle roots and stuff, uh, it's basically just on X Smithy to constantly provide vision coverage uh, for Poe Belter in mid lane. And then, obviously, double lift in bottom lane. You can probably leave impact on an island and then just have x Smithy play right-centric. And then for contracts on that Skarner, I mean, he has a lot of versatility 
on the left hand side of the map and on the bottom side of the or on the left and right hand side of the map. So a lot of the onus is actually on contracts to make things happen for his team, whereas X Smithy and Team Liquid should just be content to play a vision based vision game or a river based vision game and allow Pobelter to basically just do his thing, get double lift into the mid stages of the game, and then just look to make sparks fly there. Um, I mean, it should also be noted that I think that Team Liquid has a much better team composition the longer that this game goes on, which is something that I normally feel a little like. It's kind. Of, it's kind of weird to say that when you when you look at some of their champions, right? The Sejuani and the the Scion, but I think in, in this case it's it's fine. Some trades happening early on. I really like that Contracts is seemingly just going for a three camp. He could just go for a three camp into Scuttle Crab and then fall back and farm his uh, his Gromp and his Wolves, and I think that would be fine. Alternatively, he could even look for top lane here. It looks like uh, Impact was coming down to get a ward out. X Smithy taking a little bit of a trade on him. Contracts turns around, and now he obviously has priority and tempo over X Smithy. Smithy immediately goes back and just gets his Wraith camp. And now the thing is, is that after you get the Wraith Camp, you could just go up to Golems and then Recall, but instead he's moving on to the right-hand side, and I guess he wants to get his Gromp, but when you look at this and you're like, okay, I'm going to get the Gromp, and then the only other thing you could be thinking is to get Vision on the right-hand side. Uh, but that's not really going to do anything. So he, he has so much more value out of just recalling immediately and getting back on the map and then staying on the map for a longer duration. His recalling now, and now this is where it's like kind of awkward, right? Because this is going to be the camp that ends up respawning, right? You don't want to be on the right-hand side of the map right now, and if you do go up to top lane, your route is pretty predictable. And then it's also extremely easy for Lorlo to play around this because he hasn't recalled yet. Braum has minion D material. I, I don't understand what's going on anymore. Smithy and Ole coming in, getting a little bit of vision on Golden Guardians. I mean, the early game is, is pretty boring for the most part right now. Team Liquid is... I mean, the game stagnating the way that it is is completely fine. Contract's not really finding any uh, hole in Team Liquid's armor. Looks like he could path up to top right now. I don't know why you would hit that and reveal exactly where you are. That, that That's kind of weird. That's really strange, actually. So Contrax's rooting here is a little bit weird. I don't understand the uh, the priority. He's going to recall now. Hands over the, the blue to high. Now Pobelter should actually just be able to get a recall, and this is perfect synergy with X Smithy, because now X Smithy can start the leash by the time Pobelter gets back to the lane. He just picks up the blue immediately, goes straight into laning phase, and then X Smithy can just get some good vision on Contrax, and that's going to give double lift and Ole a lot of safety, and then it's also going to tell Impact exactly what's going on. So, realistically, it should be very, very difficult for Contracts to, to find a hole in TL's armor right now.
First strike of the game being Mountain. I mean, we, we can talk about that as well. God, this is so dull. The the Skarner the Skarner pathing in so many. Uh, like we can we can pause and talk about it, but then it's like it's talking about it's like reading out loud an entire novel. He needs to just keep up constant pressure, and they need to maintain constant control of the river. Like, he needs to always look for gank and then farm after, and use, like, mini rubber banding. Skarner is just naturally going to be more efficient than Sejuani in the early stages of the game, even if he's behind in levels. And instead, like, his paths were always refined, or they, not refined, but they were, they were tuned to be economic and keeping up with X-Smithy. I feel like he's really, really dropped the ball. And they're not going to get any value out of just playing this this very, very slow game against TL. Okay, well, I don't know what the hell that just was. <laughs> Alright. So... They get some vision in on red, and Contracts is going to pick up his red buff. And then immediately after this, looks like x Mithy started the Drake, and then Pole Belter in mid lane ends up just getting picked up by Contracts. And, like, I, I, I just don't think that this should ever happen. You know he's going to flash. You have to flash. And he doesn't do it. So they end up picking up a kill. This is just completely clowny. We see this happen in so many games where it's just kills and fights that should realistically never occur because everyone has complete knowledge and yet something happens and the game just flips lopsidedly in one direction. Kill onto Deft. And I mean, as soon as they kill Deft... Deftly, sorry. As soon as they as soon as they get the kill onto Deftly, they charge into the the red side jungle. But realistically, I mean, they, they could just turn around and get the Mountain Drake because the Mountain Drake is actually super super big when you have the Tristana and you have the Corky. And if you if you get the Mountain Drake at that point, I mean, I think there's even an argument to actually just flip flop your bot lane, have your bottom lane go up into top and put Scion down in bottom, and you can let bottom tier one turret die, and it would actually be advantageous for you. Because then you're, you know, you're looking at like 13, 14 minutes, you're on the left-hand side of the map, Sejuani's going to be pathing there, and it doesn't actually matter about bottom tier 1, you have the mount, helps with the herald, you capitalize on the herald, you use the herald to actually net yourself the next big objective. But it's like, these type of plays, you'll never see them. And now, somehow, Golden Guardians are actually the ones that end up picking up the Rift Herald. And it's like, okay. Slolo taking this trade against Impact. You can see Pope Belter almost there. Almost gets the kill on the Impact, but not quite. And now I like what x Smithy is doing with Impact. They're shoving the wave into the turret. And let's just watch it. What, it. what exactly is happening? So, Double Lift just has Eye Edge. He wants to go into mid lane. They're clearing out Vision in mid. Now, you know where Orianna is, right? And here's the other thing. Let's just watch. So, they don't know where Braum is. They know that Orianna is around there. And they go straight into the brush. But it's like, why are you trying to do this, right? When you have... I guess it's just because they don't know where Braum is, and they think that, okay, we can just go on to High. I think that, like, what they're thinking is that maybe High goes into this brush and they're going to kill him, but realistically, this vision doesn't do anything. You can just go like this and plant the ward that way, and then it's a lot safer. Xmithian Impact trying to get the bottom tier 1. Rift Herald being used mid, and this is actually a really, really big pickup for T or for Golden Guardians. Let's take a look at this one more time. 
So you can see here that double lift comes over the wall, pull belter. What the hell just happened? He Valkyried backwards, even though X Smithy was on the way and double lift was right here. <clears throat> So I think there's a lot of miscommunication. And now X Smithy is gonna die for it. They did get the bottom tier one turret, but this should mean that Golden Guardians should actually be able to convert this into a Mountain Drake capture, which it does look like they're going to do. TL has their bottom lane in mid right now, and they're just pushing. I mean, realistically, all that Team Liquid should be trying to do now is just stall the game out until all their champions have two, two and a half items. Stall the game out, wait for the next Drake to come up, look to take the next Drake. There's absolutely zero reason to be fighting, crossing into Golden Guardian's side of the, the jungle or their river, right? All you have to do is fight for defensive river vision control, and just let the game play out naturally, wait for the next Drake, take a fight at the next Drake, get the next Drake, let Corky, Tristana continue to scale up, and then win that fight. But instead, they're moving around the map, making, you know, they're, they're trying to make plays happen instead of just being content to let the game unfold naturally. Paul Belter shoves in that entire wave. He didn't need to shove it in as fast as he did. He could have held it in front of the turret. And look at how far up double lift, uh, you know, double lift X Smithy and Ole are coming. There's, there's not, you're never gaining anything. You are relying on your opponents to make a mistake. And that, that's not a realistic way to, to play the game. Especially if you just identify, like, you ask yourself, okay, what does Golden Guardians need right now? And the answer is that they need TL to be scattered and then out of position without proper vision so they can make a pick. And they need to do that over and over and over. And then they, because they have the first Mountain Drake, depending on who on TL goes down, they can turn that into a Baron. Constantly clearing waves way too soon, both parties. Like this right here. There's no reason for Deathly to kill the wave as soon as he's killing it. Orianna should be able to hold it. Like, even if you end up losing mid-tier 1, right, you, you can concede mid-tier 1 here, and it's not the end of the world, right? You're not going to lose the game over 100 gold. You can let the wave come into the turret and then try to stabilize and hold the turret. You can delay the, you know, the snapping of the, the freeze up in top lane back into the opponent. Because tier 1 turrets are pawns at this stage of the game. You're not going to lose the game over stuff like this. <clears throat> okay. And let's look at this, right? So impact just alts away. And then what see we saw this in the TSM game. What obligation is Team Liquid under to come out? What are they getting? It doesn't make any fucking it doesn't make any fucking sense! So ridiculous. 
The boogie monster's not real. Like, you don't need to check under the bed to know that. Now they're going to end up giving up another Mountain Drake when they should have just been controlling their blue side jungle sooner and then looking to make a play around the Mountain Drake. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Wait, double F has ult. Wait. What? Just knock him away. No, the flash isn't the problem. The ultimate is the, the problem. I mean, it says he has ult, unless I'm blind. It says he has ult. Unless I just... Now TL, I mean, again, the, the narrative of this game is TL needs to wait and Golden Guardians needs to play a vision war and pray TL makes mistakes and capitalize with Skarner. Also, is Righteous Glory plus Predator? Ne oh, that's a very fast Scorpion. Okay, never mind. All right, I, I guess I just got my answer. Why, why, why are TL looking to force a fight? Why? What? Just keep stalling the game. Corky poke. I mean, it's not, it's not a lot of poke. You know, I understand that, but still, like... Okay, so that's gonna be Golden Guardians getting Baron. This is like, TL just made a play that if TL was in normal TL position, aka up, you know, like, uh, you know, massive lead and stuff, or just even, it would be okay. That fight would probably work, even though objectively, the play is bad. The play with a lead is bad, even though it would likely work. The play without a lead is certainly going to not work, but it's like the inability to differentiate what makes a play good or bad. It's their inability to assess like leads or the opponent's lack thereof and determine that that is what made a, a fight good. I've seen this in almost all of their games. They, they take these choices and these fights and stuff that they win it because they're better not because it should have been won or that it was an okay choice. Now with Baron, Golden Guardians. Okay, so Lorlo should be able to get bottom turret. And no, okay. So immediately after the Baron, let's just look at the lane, the lane assignments. Okay. So they get, okay, hold on. Did we just, wait, what? They go off the Baron. What was the immediate lane assignments? Why did, why, hold on. Why did, Okay. Why did no one just go top lane, tap the wave with Baron and recall? That's number one. Now, immediately post Baron, why is the rotation not just gonna be what okay, why is the rotation not just gonna be Nar, 
4, get this, get this, recall, and then nar, 4, and then get mountain. That should be the play, 100% of the time. So Lolo's down in the bottom. He's getting chip damage down, but like look at look at the amount of time that's being wasted. They could they could get so much more. They could capitalize so much more across the map. Now also, even though ah, I mean I guess giving red buff to high probably isn't atrocious, but just refreshing it on deathly probably isn't that bad. They lose out on the opportunity to get bottom tier 2. They still haven't gotten top. High's going over now to pick up a wave and then shove one more wave. So Golden Guardians is not really utilizing the map very well, but their advantages are so big, and the Mountain Drakes are just so helpful. But Team Liquid's not out of the game yet. Even though they're, they're down, you know, 6k, 7k gold or whatever, their team composition is superior. And if they do bleed all of the outer turrets, but it doesn't occur fast enough to give Golden Guardians enough acceleration, Team Liquid can realistically fight their way back into it, you know, KT style. Golden Guardians have RNG'd, though, like gods, although I guess the best dragon that could have spawned right, like, the one that was just captured, if that was an Infernal Drake, that would have been the best possible thing uh, Golden Guardians could have asked for. A triple mountain, it's nice, but when they're already guaranteed to get all of the outers, it's not as nice as an infernal. Now we'll just take one. La we'll take a look at this team fight. Hold on. Let, let, did, did, hold on. PL is engaging. What? It's like a fucking Leroy demonetized Leroy Jenkins Scion. They just want to fight. You know, I was going to get my eye surgery next week, and it's going to make me blind for about a week, but I did go to the doctors in a few hours, and I am watching this game, and I might not want to see anymore. Uh, get me out. Oh, man. All right, let's take one last, we'll, we'll take another look at the team fight. So Skarner chooses the best target in the world because, all right, Golden Guardians, they don't need to R. They don't need to R here. They can just do chip damage and eventually get the turret, right? Mid lane is okay. Top lane is atrocious. So just wait a little bit, wait for the next wave. That's completely fine. And just try to utilize the Oriana Ball. Try to do something. You don't need to R on Skarner. Even if you end up not getting this turret here, that's okay too. You can just see that no one was ready to follow up on like Lorlo's engage and stuff. If Pobelter just got locked up, everything you know here would be a little bit better. Like right here, if, if Pope Belter just dies, then all of Golden Guardians can just back up, right? They don't have to keep going like this. And if they do back up, then they can just recall. They can send Nar top lane, and they can send four people mid lane. And that would be, I mean, that's whatever. But this was just super, super, super bad. These are like the ways that Golden Guardians can lose the game. So, this is very similar to how, like, CLG wins games right now, where their opponents lose. 
rather than they win? What? Bar Baron's coming up in eight seconds. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> the Nayram, dude. The Nayram. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the Nayram. <laughs> What is going on? Alright. Well, okay. So they get the Baron. I don't even... I don't... Oh, man. Like, yes, this can be played better mechanically by both parties, but it's just so... It's... Ah. Oh. Pobelter's not here. Nars TPing in. No one, like... They don't play around the teleport from Lorlo. If Lorlo doesn't do this, the fight does look different. Ever so slightly. Okay, what? Even, even if he gets the kill there, he's dying. Getting the kill there doesn't actually mean anything. Okay, so now Elder Dragon is live, and Golden Guardians with the Triple Mountain are hellbent on getting it. They do get it, Exmithy fails the smite fight. And now, Golden Guardians, I mean, this should be the freest win in the universe. All that they have to do here now is just 0-4-1, and the game ends. 0-4-1, and get the base. Do not go balls to the wall, don't look for a fight. You don't need to do that. Wait, I don't understand. It, does, it doesn't matter, though. Like, it it really, really doesn't matter. The ultimate doesn't matter. So, it, he's dead anyway. Right. So rather than doing a 0-4-1, they instead commit as 5, lose the wave in mid, and get something they were guaranteed to get anyway with the Elder Dragon and the Baron. Great. Truly gold. In. Now they're going to group 5 mid. Yep. Yeah. And now, look at top lane. So we can't quite, you know, like, every, every, it's all about tempo, by the way. They don't check on the red, they could have stolen the red away. So we wasted about 30 seconds.
now they can just do a 410. 410 is completely fine. 410, you get top tier 2, and then you, you siege two waves, and then you wave for Baron, you fall back to Baron, you get Baron, you take Baron, you win the team fight. That's basically all that they need to do right now for Golden Guardians. Yep, keep Nara in mid. That's the first good thing that they're doing, like all game almost. is up in 15 seconds 15 super minions in bottom pure vision control in the red side jungle in triple mountain drake better just corner off that scion <laughs> fabulous excellent <laughs> the neighbor amazon All right, I like this. I do like that, two-manning it. Yep. They two-mana, get elixirs. What, what do these numbers mean? What, what, what does this mean? Anyone know what these mean? I'm actually really curious. Four, one, zero. Four, one, zero. Or one, four, zero. Vision score? How is that determined? Number make number. All right, Sella. Is it like total ward counts ever? Oh, okay. Ward's killed and placed, okay. All right, they're in the base. Get the inhibitor, all right. TL needs to do a miracle if they want to come back and win this now. Elder Dry, all right. Okay, zero four one. this is good. Oof! I got the Scion. And that's, that should be the game. Yeah, you're in the base, you get the inhibitor, and now you rotate to the right, you get the next inhibitor, you get the 75. And, yeah, hey! I expected them to go for the end. It is super, super correct to back all the way up, wait for the Elder, get the Elixirs, refresh everything, and then just go straight into their base. 75, Elder Dragon. Okay, that t Okay, what? Oh god. <laughs> That's like- I don't even know what I would call this. Oh man. This is like mixing peanut butter and tuna. You know, you just don't do this. It's like tuna, peanut butter, mayonnaise, Sour cream, honey mustard, throw in a little bit of relish, a little bit of ghost pepper, because why the hell not? <laughs> like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> a little bit of toothpaste. Oh, God. 
All right. So realistically, Team Liquid took a lot of fights that they would take if they were ahead, and they refuse to play rotation, like rotation-based game in the mid mid or the early to mid transition and mid to late. Golden Guardians fumbled a lot of open rotations that should have been pretty easy to execute on. I think Contrax's pathing in like first 12 minutes was kind of bad. And I think that there was a lot of opportunity loss. Um, outside of that though, I mean, oh God, the game was just lots of handshakes on things that I can't, you know, understand. This truly was the, the NARAM.